Every team makes a mistake at some point in their career. And boy, when it comes to trading, nobody is exempt. The deal is done, and so is the contract extension. Kevin Cobb goes to the Arizona Cardinals for a second round choice and cornerback Dominic Rogers Cromartie. We've seen quite a few trades absolutely backfire on pretty much every single team over the years. So, without further ado, let's take a look back at every NFL team's worst trade ever. Arizona Cardinals, Kevin Cobb. Can you imagine trading a Pro Bowl corner and a second round pick for a backup quarterback with the hopes of turning him into your starter? Because that's exactly what Arizona did, and man, did it backfire. Cobb never even won more than three games in a season. Atlanta Falcons, Brett Favre. While he clearly had some growing up to do, according to the legends of Brett Favre's Atlanta days, we still can't give the Falcons a pass on trading one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game. Especially when the trade only netted the Falcons Tony Smith, a running back who has under 330 career rushing yards. Baltimore Ravens, Kyle Buller. The Ravens rarely miss when it comes to personnel moves. But the gamble they took trading up 22 spots to 19 to select Kyle Buller in the 2003 draft was a disaster. He was under .500 during his career as a Raven, and he never really developed as a pro. And the Patriots, who received Baltimore's 2004 first round pick in exchange, ended up getting Vince Wilfork, a five-time pro bowler and two-time Super Bowl champ. Buffalo Bills, Kelvin Benjamin. Kelvin Benjamin was a huge disappointment for Buffalo. The Bills gave up a third and seventh round pick for him in 2017, and all he did was get injured so discontent in the locker room and record less than 25 catches. The best thing he did in Buffalo was to leave. Once the Bills cut him the following offseason. Carolina Panthers, Sean Gilbert. While the Panthers were on the right side of the Kelvin Benjamin trade, they were not as lucky with Sean Gilbert, who they shelled out two first rounders for the rights to sign in 1998. Gilbert may have been a serviceable player in Carolina, but his performance never warranted that hefty price tag. Chicago Bears, Mitch Trubisky draft pick. The Bears should serve as a cautionary tale for any team thinking about trading up, particularly to take a relatively unheralded quarterback prospect. There was simply no reason for Chicago to send extra assets to San Francisco to move up one pick. Just a boneheaded trade on so many levels. Cincinnati Bengals, Kajana Carter pick. Cincinnati was entering the 1995 NFL Draft with the number five overall pick. They traded that pick and their second rounder to Carolina to move up and take former Penn State running back Kijana Carter with the first overall pick. Needless to say, it did not pan out how Cincy had hoped. Carter tore his ACL in a preseason game and his career amounted to just 1,144 yards and eight touchdowns in eight seasons. Cleveland Browns, Brady Quinn pick. Cleveland traded its second round pick in 2007, number 36 overall, and a first round pick in 2008 to Dallas so that they can move up onto the 22nd spot and select Brady Quinn. And if you want to know how badly that went for Cleveland, just look at what they flipped Quinn for a few years later. Peyton Hillis and a sixth rounder. Talk about depreciation. Dallas Cowboys, Joey Galloway. After Michael Irvin got hurt in 1999, Dallas was desperate for some more wide receiving talent. Jerry Jones sent two first round picks out to Seattle in exchange for Joey Galloway. His time in Dallas was an utter disaster. He ended up missing the following season with a torn ACL, and to be honest, he was never really the same. His performance certainly never warranted the high price that the Cowboys paid. Denver Broncos, Steve Tensey. The Steve Tensey trade is one of the most head-scratching trades these two eyes ever did see. Denver traded for second-string quarterback Steve Tensey in exchange for the Broncos' number one draft choice in 1968 and 1969. I get that the NFL was different back then, but that is an unthinkable price for a backup. Especially when you consider he led the team to a 3-11 record the following year. Detroit Lions Bobby Lane. While a lot of the entries on this list were trades for players that didn't work out, the Lions is a case of giving up on a player that they shouldn't have. 
Bobby Lane, who, as strange as it sounds, won a championship for Detroit and is a Hall of Fame quarterback, was dealt to the Steelers during the 1958 season for Earl Morrell and a couple of draft picks. To make matters worse, some fans believe in the curse of Bobby Lane, an omen akin to what Babe Ruth did to the Red Sox franchise. Green Bay Packers, Terrell Buckley. Although Terrell Buckley amassed 12 interceptions in 50 games as a member of the Packers, his actual coverage itself was suspect and inconsistent. Green Bay shipped its former fifth overall pick to Miami, where he went on to actually have a long NFL career. He eventually won a Super Bowl with New England and proved to be worth much more than the past considerations he was traded for. Houston Texans, DeAndre Hopkins. When you have an all-pro talent like DeAndre Hopkins, you try to hold on to him no matter what. And if you absolutely have to deal him, you had better get some value. Not just trade him for an aging running back, a fourth round pick swap, and a second rounder. Bill O'Brien, man. Indianapolis Colts, Trent Richardson. Trent Richardson has disappointed a few NFL fan bases over the years, including the Colts faithful. Indy sent a first rounder to Cleveland for him two games into the 2013 season, and he bombed. He played just 29 games for Indy and failed to net 1,000 rushing yards before flaming out of the league. Woof. Jacksonville Jaguars, Blaine Gabbert. There was a lot wrong with Jacksonville's decision to trade up and take Blaine Gabbert. For starters, it was Blaine Gabbert. Oh, damn, motherfucker! Who, while serviceable at the NFL level, was not a guy who you trade up into the top 10 to take. To make matters worse, it caused a huge rift internally because they chose to do it without even telling head coach Jack Del Rio. The Kansas City Chiefs, Joe Montana. For our younger fans, Joe Montana was Tom Brady before Tom Brady. And like Brady, he had a fallen out of sorts with his trademark franchise, the 49ers. Except instead of departing in free agency, Montana was traded to Kansas City in exchange for a first rounder. But the team never made it to the Super Bowl, which was clearly the ambition in bringing him in. Las Vegas Raiders, Randy Moss. The Raiders were in a tough spot here because Moss clearly was over being a Raider. But when you look at the trade on paper, it simply has to be included. They sent him to New England for a lowly fourth rounder, and all he did was put up some of the most preposterous seasons a wideout has ever had, including the legendary 07 season right after the trade in which he netted just under 1,500 yards and hauled in 23 touchdowns. Los Angeles Chargers, Ryan Leaf pick. The Chargers swapped first round picks with the Cardinals to take Ryan Leaf second overall. And they also had to give up their second round pick from that draft and their first rounder for the following year as well. Ryan Leaf, I really believe, Chris, when you look back at this trade, San Diego moving up from three to two, five years from now, it may not look like Bobby Beathard gave up enough. We don't need to rehash Leaf's complete downfall, but if you'll just look at it in terms of the on the field production, he only played three seasons with the team, throwing 33 interceptions to only 13 touchdowns in 21 games. Los Angeles Rams, Jerome Bettis. The Rams draft a decision to punt on Jerome Bettis and a third rounder in exchange for a second and fourth rounder from Pittsburgh will go down as one of the most franchise defining decisions for both teams. Miami Dolphins, Dante Culpepper. While the Dolphins only gave up a second round pick for the former Vikings quarterback, the trade was still an unmitigated disaster. Culpepper played just four games and was released after one season. Great use of a pick there. Minnesota Vikings, Herschel Walker. The Herschel Walker trade is one of the most infamous trades in NFL history. The Vikings traded five players and eight draft picks for Walker, which is bad enough to begin with. But the way that the deal was structured awarded Dallas with even higher quality picks than they initially thought. And that helped Dallas to build its 90s dynasty. New England Patriots, Chad Jackson pick. Although moving up to take Jackson 36 overall made sense at the time for New England, this trade backfired in a big way. Jackson suffered a hamstring injury during his rookie preseason and just never really bounced back fully. He was then hampered by a groin injury and eventually a torn ACL. You have to think that 153 total receiving yards in two seasons was a pretty unsatisfactory return on investment for Bill Belichick standards. New Orleans Saints, Ricky Williams. 
Ricky Williams was an amazing college football player and a great pro in many ways, but the Saints method for acquiring him simply could not have been worth it. New Orleans gave up every pick it had in the 99 draft, plus two of its first three picks in the 2000 NFL draft, all to move up from 12th to 5th to select Williams. They get Ricky Williams for less than some people might have imagined. Chris, they couldn't be more excited. Mike Ditka came in with a big cigar here today. I think he just lit it up. That is a king's ransom, especially considering how quickly their relationship deteriorated. The Saints traded him away within three seasons. Yikes. New York Giants, Leonard Williams. The Giants were sitting at a paltry 2-6 at the 2019 trade deadline when the team decided to send two draft picks, a third round pick in 2020, and a conditional fourth in 2021 to the Jets for defensive lineman Leonard Williams. It was curious that the Giants were four games under .500 and acting like buyers at the deadline, particularly for a guy who was set to become a free agent that offseason. The team went on to lose five games in a row and finished 4-12, while Williams accumulated just 1.5 sacks. New York Jets, Tim Tebow. Although the Jets didn't give up much to get Tim Tebow, anything outside a couple of spare footballs was overpaying. The addition of Tebow put the team into a media circus and derailed starting quarterback Mark Sanchez's entire progression as a pro. The Philadelphia Eagles, Kiko Alonso. When the Eagles sent its star running back LaShawn McCoy to the Bills for Kiko Alonso, it was a curious decision, even at the time. Alonso was coming off of a season in which he had torn his ACL during training camp and had missed the entire season. His production was mediocre at best, and he was only in town for 11 games total. Overall, a terrible swing and a miss for Philly. Pittsburgh Steelers, Santonio Holmes. Giving up on Santonio Holmes was clearly a blunder. He was coming off his best season, in which he had recorded 79 catches for 1,248 yards and 5 touchdowns. But off-the-field concerns apparently made him expendable. As a Jet, he ended up being productive both on and off the field. And overall, you'd have to assume that the Steelers regret giving up on him early. San Francisco 49ers, OJ Simpson. Tension was growing between Simpson and the Bills, and he ended up requesting a trade. The 49ers bit and sent five draft picks over three years, including the number one overall pick in 1979 in exchange for Simpson services. Too bad OJ wasn't even close to the player he was in Buffalo. He only rushed for 1,053 yards and scored six total touchdowns in his two seasons with the Niners before retiring. Seattle Seahawks, Tony Dorsett. Seattle deserves a little bit of a pass on this one because Dorsett was vocal regarding his concerns and playing for an expansion franchise, which the Seahawks were back in 1977. Seattle had my rights, and my whole thought process during the whole scenario was the fact to try to discourage Seattle from drafting me because of the fact that I, I kind of felt that running behind an expansion line was not would not be very healthy for me. So. I was trying to discourage them as much as I could, you know, trying to say if, if they draft me, I'm going I'm to probably go to, uh, to, to Canada or go to the World Football League or whatever league it was at the USFL. Gil Brett, I was talking with Gil and Gil was, oh, don't worry about it. He said, somebody, some good team and somebody going to probably end up picking you. I'm like, man, how's that going to happen? You know, they got Ricky Bell. Everybody already knows that Ricky's going to go first and I'm going to go second. And how the heck am I going to end up somewhere with, with a good team? And you had the two expansion teams, Tampa Bay and Seattle. And I'm like, man, Seattle got my rights, man. And I said, I don't want to do that. And that's, I said, you know what? Another thing is, it's too far away from home. But fortunately for me, uh, Gil knew what he was talking about. They, uh, they pulled one over on him, I think. <laughs> but all I know one thing, the Cowboys threw so much stuff on the table there. Uh, and I don't know if, if it was... <laughs> if it was all legit or what, but they bought they bought into it, and uh, thank God. Watch me play. You'll see when I get a ball, my eyes, they light up like silver dogs, and I'm just looking at everything, and, and I do see a lot out there. A lot of players were involved with, with, with that trade and whatnot, but um, and if you, if you go back over that and try to figure out who were the names of those guys, you probably won't be able to figure out <laughs> none of them but, but me. <laughs> When you look back on it and see Tony Dorsett's name at the top of every running list that was ever compiled, you'll realize how, how great a running back he really was. That was a great time for me, uh, having the opportunity to, to be the second person picked in the draft. Well, um, man, uh, uh, 
it was like God's gift to me uh, as a professional football player to end up here in Dallas with uh, quote unquote we be what well, we became America's team. Even considering the fact that Seattle got four picks, a first and three second rounders, when you give up the rights to a Hall of Famer, you're gonna come out of the whole deal looking stupid. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Darrell Rivas. For all his strengths, Rivas did seem to lack the eternal motor that some of the league's greats have. So when he was in situations that he wasn't crazy about, he was fairly quick to start mailing it in, which is exactly what we saw when the Buccaneers traded two picks, including a first rounder to the New York Jets in exchange for his services. To make matters worse, they watched him immediately morph back into an all pro talent with New England once he left town. Tennessee Titans, Steve Largent. Back when they were the Oilers, this franchise made a trade so bad that it has lived on through different cities, team names, all of it. Steve Largent was admittedly not seen as a big time NFL prospect, despite being an All-American in college. The Titans shipped Largent and their fourth round pick off to the expansion Seattle Seahawks after four preseason games. And Largent went on to earn countless accolades during his 14 year career with Seattle, which ended with him in Canton. Washington football team. Robert Griffin III. As high as the peak of the RG3 experiment was, there is no doubt that Washington wants this one back. They gave up four picks, including three first rounders for a quarterback who flamed out of the starting role before his rookie deal expired. Ouch. But what do you think was the worst trade in your favorite NFL team's history? Join us in the comments section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.